Hi everyone, welcome to Career Cafe. This week's Career Cafe is Ann Morse. She works for VTrans. She works as a program manager for the Civil Rights Division. All right. So one of the cool things about where I work is there isn't a dress code. Um, which is why today I've got Carhartts and a t-shirt and I feel kind of bad because nobody told me there was a camera. So I might have dressed a little nicer, um, at least a nicer t-shirt. So quick question, who knows what the Vermont Agency of Transportation or VTrans does? Yeah? No, not so much. It's a trick question. Who else? Yeah? We work with roads and stuff. That's absolutely true. So not only do we work with roads, we work with bridges, we work with guardrails, we work with airports. I want to thank you for knowing that. I have prizes for those of you who are brave enough to speak today. Because I'm not going to be the only one talking. So if we work with roads and we work with bridges and we work with airports, how many of you think you're a customer of the Agency of Transportation? Anybody think you're not? Who thinks you're not? Man, that was really easy. I thought I was going to make five bucks on a bet on this. So the Agency of Transportation is the second largest state agency in Vermont. We've got about 1,300 employees across more than 80 different locations. And we have career paths galore. So I was going to bet that you were all customers of the agency because you all ride a school bus or have a driver's license or a driver's permit and DMV is part of the Agency of Transportation. So I want to thank you because you all actually pay some taxes and some fees that lets the agency do the work that we do. Sydney mentioned I work in the civil rights section and that's um, true, but it doesn't really tell you very much about what I do. So my jobs are spearheading the agency's outreach and recruitment efforts. I told you we've got about 1,300 employees across the state. I don't know if you've heard, but unemployment is incredibly low right now, which means there's actually more job openings than there are people to work. And there's certain career paths where we know in the next five years, 10 years, or even right now, we have some gaps in the number of people that are retiring and leaving the workforce compared to the number of people coming up looking for those careers. So the agency has actually kind of jumped ahead, and we do a lot of youth outreach, and I'm the youth programs coordinator, which is why I end up at high schools. And we do an awful lot of work to try to get high schoolers and now middle schoolers involved in the transportation system to learn about what we do. Um, and we do that a bunch of ways. We spend a lot of time in schools. We bring a lot of students to us. One of the best programs we have in the summer is a National Summer Transportation Institute. It's funded by Federal Highway. It's completely free. And as a summer camp, we have a high school program and a middle school program designed to let students know what the transportation system looks like and how they can participate and what career paths are open to them. For the last two years, this will be the third year, we're partnering with Vermont Technical College to put this on. So for the high school kids, they're staying on campus at Vermont Tech in Randolph for about a week during the summer. And they get to work with school professors, with agency professionals, and experience a whole bunch of stuff. And I've got a video I'm going to show you that was made by some of our campers. One of the best parts about partnering with Vermont Tech and getting you on campus there is not only do you meet the staff, but Vermont Tech wants to see you back. So they've been offering scholarships to our students for this free summer camp. Remember, it's completely 100% free. They're giving you a $1,000 scholarship for participating, which is renewable for up to four years. So if you're thinking about maybe I want to go to Vermont Tech, maybe I don't, this is a good thing to figure out. If you like the campus, you get a feel for it, and then you've got that scholarship for having a good time, basically. So I'm going to put this video on. And this was made by some of our campers in 2015. <laughs>
any video? Oh, yeah. So that was made by a group of high school students as they were participating in camp. Can anybody tell me a mode of transportation that we saw there? Yes, sir. What? Flight. Flight. Aviation, absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, they, there was also a truck. There was a truck, absolutely. Motor vehicles. What else? Boat. Boat. Who said boat? All right. Okay, you're smart. You're not going to shine this in your own eyes, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so transportation has a whole bunch of modes. At VTrans, we take care of all of those. So there's railroad. They rode the Amtrak. There's boats. We went on to the, the ferry boats. We got to go underneath uh, Ethan Allen and check out the motors. That was pretty cool. Aviation is one of the favorites at camp. So every year camp is a little bit different. But every year what we've been able to do, at least for the past four years, is get every student a flight lesson. So you learn all about aviation, how to navigate the skies. They go out for the last couple of years and they actually take care of all the pre-flight checks. So they're looking over all the components of the planes. They're going to take the planes, they're going to untie them, and then the students get in and fly the plane for their first flight lesson. So for the last two years, they've flown from Burlington to Plattsburgh. We take two kids at a time, we switch them, and then somebody else flies back. Then they're responsible for the post-flight check. They tie it down. As you saw in there, we get to see the National Guard. Every year is a little bit different. There's a lot of engineering. There's usually heavy equipment that we get to operate. We get to learn about the different careers, including um, our science careers. So you got to see the lab in that video just a little bit and how we check all of the materials that are being used. Um, so we've been running this camp for 14, 15 years now um, with a bunch of different schools across Vermont. And what we realized was we could get bringing high school students in, and they were really interested and really engaged, and they formed really strong, long-lasting friendships. But we didn't see them entering the workforce. So they'd go off to college, and maybe they'd study something with transportation and maybe not. And we said, you know, we're missing some folks here. And we watched as students graduated, especially at tech centers, and they would graduate on a Wednesday, and they'd start work on a Thursday. And we're like, well, what happened to that? We miss those kids. Um, and we've now, for the past two and a half years, been working with a program to hire 16 and 17 year olds who want to work with our road crews, which is one of the biggest and quickest, easiest ways to get into the agency of transportation. So we have an active program now where we're hiring 16 and 17 year olds. If you are looking for a summer gig and you like to be outside and you want to contribute to your community, it pays pretty good. It's like 40 hours a week, Monday to Friday, every weekend off. And it was 1260 something an hour last summer. Um, so when you consider that all summer long there's guaranteed you know, scheduling, it's not a bad deal. My job at the agency is to get to know all of the other people at the agency and the things that they do, which means I get to have a lot of fun and I don't have to know a whole ton about the things that they do. But I get to go see some of the stuff that they do. So I know we have engineers. I know we have accountants. I know we have lawyers. I know we have environmental folks and biologists. We take care of the land that's around us and the animals and the plants. Um, we have people like me that talk for a living. It's all over the place. If you want to be outside as a career path, consider survey. If you like science and you want to be outside, there's a ton of money to be made and not enough people. You like computers? How about GIS, where we're now taking all of this data and embedding it into everything that we do so we know exactly where things are. Have any of you ever gotten direction somewhere and somebody told you, oh, it's by where that used to be, where those people used to live, right? It doesn't really help when you're looking at maps that are 120 years old if you go 10 steps from the corner of the barn and the barn hasn't been there for 100 years, right? So we're looking for people with computer skills that want to come in and put those into play. Um, some brief bits about State of Vermont, and then I will open it up to questions. So the State of Vermont, I, I told you that VTrans has the second largest state employer with about 1,300 employees. The state has about 8,000 employees across the state. And as you go out and you're looking for a career, there's some things you need to look at. And I know everybody is out there to get a job for pay, right? It's an important thing. And there's other benefits. So what other benefits might you be looking for when you go to work? Who haven't I heard from yet? You Depending on the job, it could just be getting active. Getting active, absolutely. Free exercise, we actually pay you for it. What else? Okay, there's adults in the room. 
Yes. Um, well, benefits, vacation, pension, um, health insurance. So. I'm glad you brought up health insurance because this is one of the areas that I like to talk to folks about that are young that are looking for a job. So you go and you look for a job and one place tells you they'll pay you $12 an hour and the other place tells you they'll pay you $12.50 an hour. Which one are you going to take? $12.50. $12.50. That 50 cents makes a big difference, right? How long are you going to be there? Um, however long I'm going to be there. <laughs> so the average employee now is staying with a company for about two to two and a half years. In the old days, people used to work one place their entire life, right? 30, 40, 45, 55 years. Health insurance is one of those things. So if the guy that's paying you $12.50 an hour says no health insurance, but the one at $12 an hour says I'll give you health insurance, what are you going to take? Health insurance. I the one with health insurance. Okay. Is all health insurance equal? No. No. What might be different about health insurance for that one company offers you versus another? Uh, one might be bad <laughs> This is all true. Okay, who here drives? Okay, ice scrapers for you on this one. <laughs> What's a copay? What's a what? What's what you have to pay when you go. So the way health insurance works, every paycheck you pay to have health insurance, right? And health insurance doesn't equal health insurance. So the amount that you pay every paycheck is going to differ. But worse than that, more than that, when you actually need medical coverage, what's covered changes. So some places, the thing that's covered might be covered by 10% or 20% or 80% or 0 or 100, and that makes a difference. Okay, who here has a job already? Hmm. Hi. Where do you work? How long have you worked there? Two months. Okay, so I'm guessing you've never gotten a raise because you've been there two months. I'll give you a prize anyway. Okay. Adults in the room, how often do you get a raise? Once a year. Once a year. Two years ago. Two years ago. One job I got a decrease for ten and a half years. A decrease for ten and a half years. <laughs> So let's, let's go back to the scenario $12 an hour versus $12.50 an hour, right? We're going to stay there at least two years, maybe up to 30, right? The state of Vermont, the way that their pay works is it's by a chart. We already figured out how complicated the pay is, how complicated the job is. Your pay is already figured out. You get, for your first five years, a raise a year, plus cost of living raises that get negotiated in. So I actually did the math. I've been working for the state for 20 years. And I went and I looked at my compensation history for the last 20 years. And I've had 48 changes to my pay in 20 years. One of them was downward. There was a year we all took a 3% cut so they didn't lay anybody off. Which means 47 upward pay changes for the 20 years I've been working there. Who's good at math? How much is that? How many raises? Seven. How often? Uh, about two to three a year. About two to three a year. That's my personal experience. So the cool thing about the state of Vermont is when you go from one job to the next within state government, you don't start over. So all of those benefits you were talking about, like vacation time and sick time and life insurance and all of those things, when you switch from company to company, you start over every time. Except when you move within state government, you don't. So I've had like nine different jobs in those 20 years. And I now get, you know, more sick days than I can use, more vacation days than I can use. I'm actually ending up working on my vacation because it needs to get done. And I like what I do. I get to help Vermonters, and that's a really cool thing. So the other thing that the Agency of Transportation does that I have not seen other state agencies do is we put our money where our mouth is. So you can come into the agency with a high school diploma, with a two-year degree, with a four-year degree, with a six-year degree, or even more, and there's an occupation for you. But once you get on board, we have our own training center. So a lot of companies will tell you that their employees are their biggest resource. And if you take an accounting class, so where do they put the employees usually? Is it in assets or liabilities? What do you think? 
It's not assets. It's usually liabilities that most companies count their employees as. So when we tell you that we value you as an employee, and we build our own training center to train you in things that you need to know to do your job better, and things you need to know if you want another job within state government. So we're actually helping you get your foot in the door for the next spot. So I've talked about three things since I've been here. I've talked about NSTI, which is a summer camp, which costs how much? Zero, Zero completely free. I've talked about the intern program, which actually pays you instead of the other way around, right, for how you spend your summer. Get your parents off your back, start building a career path. And I've talked about state government employment in general. What questions do you have? Yes. How do you find out about the summer program? Where can we go to look for that? <laughs> well, you could go to Miss Olson. Or I brought cards that have information, which I will hand to you. Uh, and just a note, the summer program is for 16 to 18 year olds, mm -mm. is that correct? Mm -mm. Nope, it is based on age. So it is rising ninth through 12th graders. So if you're currently in 12th grade, so bad, you know, too bad, so sad, but yep. if you are younger than that, we have a middle school program. It's a day camp instead of a residential. It's yep. run out of Williston. Yep. And if you can get people to carpool with you, that kind of works really well. But the residential camp is rising ninth through 12th graders. And the internship program, the summer internship program is 16 to 18. 16 and 17 so year olds. 12 for NTSI. And STI, yep. Thanks. Yes. The summer one for 16 to 17, what types of things do they do if they're actually working? Um, so when we allowed 16 and 17 year olds to come into our workforce, we had to look really carefully at our job descriptions because the child labor laws prevented teenagers from doing some of the things that we do for work, like using a chainsaw or driving a truck. Um, so we created this job specification for an intern maintenance worker. I brought some of those for you. There's a lot of lawn mowing, a lot of shoveling, a lot of painting. Um, we teach people how to flag. So traffic control. Um, we will teach CPR and first aid. There's a lot of training that goes in even at the intern level. A lot of outside, a lot of manual labor. Yes. And those, those jobs, where, does, where would young people have to go to work? What, what would the, some of the locations be? So we have 64 garages, a little bit fewer than that in the summertime. The closest one I believe is Morrisville. And I'll pull up a map of where our garages are in a minute, okay. if that would be helpful. Yeah. So one would just have to go to the garage, and then they would go to the other uh, Yes, they would get to the garage in the morning, and then we would transport them wherever we're going. And I brought applications for that, and I can also send Ms. Olson the electronic version of that. So tip for you when you're considering whether you're filling out a paper version, if you're going to handwrite, or if you're going to print and type, if you type, it's legible. You're not going to miss out because somebody can't read your email address, right? If you put an email address in there, have it be one you check. If you put your school email address in and you only check that during the school year, you might end up missing out on some job opportunities, right? I have teenagers at home. Here's my next best piece of advice. If you've got a cell phone and you're putting that number down, please set up your voicemail. Please, please, please. So we had a scenario. Not that long ago, there was a young man who was working, he was in a tech center program, he had, had some co-op hours available, wanted to come to work for us, put in an application for that. My manager called him to speak to him about what his availability was. The phone was answered, and the person on the other end said, talk to me, dummy. And he didn't. There was a swear in there, but we're on TV. <laughs> and the manager kind of went, excuse me? Guy repeated again, talk to me, dummy. What? Well, I'm looking for, you know, Joe, is he there? Click. Phone just got hung up on, right? So he huh, looked at the application, dialed the number, same number, no answer. A week and a half later, the student was sitting in the office with their guidance counselor. The manager said, so let's talk about that phone thing. And everybody else around the table was going, what are you talking about? What phone thing? The student put his head down. He said, my buddy answered the phone. I don't know if his buddy really answered the phone or if he answered the phone, but if you want a job, you got to get your voicemail to sound kind of adult professional. You can't say, talk to me, dummy, when you answer the phone. Don't let your friends answer the phone if they're going to do that, right? Like, serious advice. 
be reachable if you want the job. So then applications would get filled up, they actually get turned back into me. And my next bit of advice for you is take a copy of it for yourself. If you've done it electronically, save it to your Google Docs because then you can get to it whenever you want. We keep those on file for one year. So if during that year you get new experience or new education, like I've gotten CPR certified, I want to add that, you can add it to the thing without redoing the whole thing. Resend me the application and it starts that 12 months over again. And then I work as a matchmaker. So I would say, okay, I heard from Sydney and Sydney wants to work in this area and I'll talk to her a little bit, find out a little bit about what her interests are, what her experiences are, and I will contact the hiring manager. So that said, there's 64 locations across the state. The first year we ran this program, we had 17 high school students on board. Some of them made it and they've stayed with us since then. They've come back summer after summer and some have come back during the school year. Some of them didn't make it a week. Wow. It's not an easy job. But here's the thing. Before you think teenagers can't do this, adults do that too. They come into our workforce and some of them stay 20, 30, 40. I've got a gentleman who's been working for us 58 years and some of them don't come back day two, right? So don't let people talk down about your generation. Other questions? I think the students have a question. So do we have seven more minutes still? Who's the timekeeper? Okay, so I have a video on the intern program, it's seven minutes. Does it make sense if there's no questions, I start it and people who want to stay can and I'll be here to answer any questions if people have them off camera.